Malcolm X was kept under heavy FBI surveillance since he got out of prison back in 1953. As he rose to national prominence as the black Muslim's chief spokesman, he became aware that he was under close watch. Our desire, our prayer, that we can have a peaceful, intelligent rally here this afternoon. But at the same time, we see that they have surrounded us with many of their own agents in uniform and out of uniform. That surveillance escalated into the infiltration of the Nation of Islam. Personal frailties were played upon, jealousy arose, and Malcolm was ultimately ousted from that organization. This caused an intense climate of rivalry that set the stage for Malcolm's assassination in February of 1965. Uh, he was uh, really declared a uh, hypocrite at the time. And uh, because of uh, some of the things that uh, he was saying in regards to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, may God be pleased with him, uh, a strong position was really taken against him. Um, the ministers began to um, speak out against uh, the things that Malcolm was saying in regards to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Uh, accusations that he uh, had made about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, he had uh, accused the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, for instance, of uh, fathering children and etc. And uh, you must understand that at that time, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to the Muslims then, was held in, in such high reverence as you would even think of any prophet being held in high reverence. And uh, this is the kind of love and admiration that uh, the Muslims at that time had for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So when uh, Minister Malcolm began to say those things, uh, it was taken as uh, an outright lie. I would say that, take for instance, um, one time in the uh, Muhammad Speaks at that time, uh, the newspaper printed uh, a big article concerning the chief hypocrite. And it actually had a, a picture of uh, uh, Malcolm's head, you know, rolling or bouncing down, down the street at that time. And, you know, the way that picture is depicted, you know, he has little horns on his head and things like this here. So, indirectly, uh, I would say that a very, very strong position was taken against him. Yes, he's immoral. You can't, you can't take nine teenage women and seduce them and give them babies and not tell me you're more and then, then then tell me you're more you could do it if you admitted you did it and admitted that the babies were yours I'd, I'd shake your hand and call you a man a good one too <laughs> but anytime you seduce teenage girls and make them be charged with adultery make them hide your crime why you're not even a man much less a, di a divine man <laughs> so uh, and, 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 and this is what he did. He took, he took at least nine that we know about. And I'm not speculating because he told this to me himself. Yes, that's why he wanted me dead, because he knew that as soon as I woke up, I'd tell it. The plan of action was basically uh, what uh, took place. Uh, me and uh, Leon, we took seats down in the front of the order barn, we came early. Um, we would drift into the uh, order barn. Um, if indeed there was a search, then we could never enter. There was no search, so uh, we drifted in just like uh, we had hoped to. Uh, Leon Davis and myself took seats uh, down front on the uh, left-hand side. Uh, Benjamin and uh, William, William, who carried the uh, sort of shotgun, sat right behind us, you know. And uh, we'll sat somewhat uh, in the back, or almost in the middle. And our plan was, as soon as uh, the uh, brother came out to speak, that uh, Wilbur would throw the uh, smoke bomb to make a dis distraction. And that uh, William would uh, fire his uh, shotgun, and that uh, Leon and myself, we would uh, fire our weapons. And then this uh, break for the door.
As in Dr. King's assassination, a police superior has trouble with the truth. He tells reporters that two suspects were arrested at the Audubon. Later, official police reports say that one was arrested. Also, listen closely as the police official carefully handles the question about police on the scene. We have two suspects in custody now. Well, where were they arrested? Who fired the shot? I wouldn't know that at this time. Where were they arrested, sir? One of uh, these men uh, was arrested uh, on the street by one of our patrolmen close by. There were no police at this meeting, were there, Inspector? There were no uniform policemen assigned inside this ball. No uniform police on the scene. Does this mean that police out of uniform were there? And if so, why didn't they take action? What were they doing there? This behavior pattern rings a bell of striking similarity with the behavior pattern of the CIA overseas. The church committee produced cables, demanded and got cables, which proved it traced the CIA's plan to kill Lumumba. Sid Gottlieb went, got on a plane and went to Leopoldville. Headquarters sent a cable saying, use the poison. Gottlieb was couriering the, uh, for the poison. A headquarters sent a cable saying, you have to use it promptly because it deteriorates. And they had a plan to try and get it into his toothpaste or give it to him in a mickey at some social function. And uh, then there's a gap, and no cables, no explanation of what happened. Then uh, five weeks later, he's beaten to death on an airplane. And uh, unfortunately, though, the, the, the airplane was in the control of people who had uh, agency cryptonyms. And uh, the gap of what happened uh, has never been answered. The, the men who were involved and were responsible obviously aren't speaking out, and, uh, and there's no paper to prove anything. So perhaps the same tactics were used against the civil rights movement. Heavy infiltration of the ranks, spread the seeds of dissension, then step back and let the blood spill. As I see it, Mr. Chairman, it is for this committee to be able to figure out how to persuade the people of this country that indeed it did go on. And how shall we ensure that it never happen again? But it will happen repeatedly unless we can bring ourselves to understand and accept that it did go on. And. Uh, And I say that as one who, who worked as a United States attorney with the Bureau and have enormous respect for its capacities in the field of kidnapping, bank robbery, and a lot of other things, but am appalled uh, to learn what the, if it's correct, the intelligence side of that Bureau was up to for so long. If we would like to believe that the FBI would do all this viciousness and all of these things to an individual and would stop short of killing him, then we're out of our mind. In America today, if we believe the CIA would deal with foreign assassinations and would not consider that home, that's like saying the mafia runs crooked gambling tables in South America, but honest ones in America. It just ain't true.